we found it. Goodness me, that was difficult. <laughs> Good hour of just messing around driving down these tracks without being able to find exactly where we're supposed to be. But anyway, that I do believe is Rommel's bunker. Today we are at the Military Museum of the Moreth Line. Let's go and take a look around. Got two French artillery pieces here out front and the fluttering Tunisian flag. Our 12 minute introductory video in our camouflage bunker. So here we are in the museum. We start out with a map of the situation in North Africa, uh, starting in November 1943 with Operation Torch. Uh, and first thing you see as you come in is Rommel's car. Look at this. Beautifully restored. It's got rear mounted engine. Yeah, in very, very good condition. And then we have all of the commanders up on the wall there, both sides, we've got the Axis on the right and the Allies on the left. And then we come around, we've got an assortment of all the different weaponry divided by nationality. So we've got the typical Italian armaments used in the battle. We've got some German weapons there. We come round, got the French armaments. Then we've got the German armaments. For some reason, the British either had a bigger selection or the museum's just got hold of more examples. We've got a much larger display here for all the British armaments. And then we've got a rather impressive German officer's uniform there. And then, oh great, a bomb and a mortar. <laughs> now about 10 kilometers from the site, you can actually visit Rommel's forward command post and you can see a model of it there behind me. Take a look. So that is still preserved somewhere out there in the desert about 10k from here. This is a feature that I really like. We've got a map and actually you get kind of talked through this as you as you come in. So this lights up and explains exactly what happened during the battle that we've got a pointer there as well to explain the situation. To give a very brief overview uh, the Mareth line was actually built by the French so we can see it up in that map. It's the blue section there. So it's actually built by the French to protect Tunisia from the Italians, uh, but in the context of Operation Torch, it was actually used by the Axis powers, uh, so the Italians and the Germans, to protect against the Allied invasion. And we can see on the map up there what ended up happening uh, is actually, even though the Nazis or the, the Axis powers ended up mining the Mareth line quite significantly, uh, the Allies outflanked them. So they just went round and ended up attacking them to the rear and in a frontal attack. Um, and the Allies won and pushed them back and eventually pushed them out of Tunisia, which was a disaster for the Axis cause. Uh, this is one of the thousands of pillboxes or cannons that were placed along the Mareth line by the French. This looks like not a great job having to uh, get in there and fire that. Can you imagine how loud that must be? So this section here was underground, this section's above ground, obviously it rotates around, and yeah, not a great job during World War II. So this is us touring the Axis side. So they're looking along the Mareth line out there towards the Allies who are attacking and the Mareth line stretching all the way from Kojan over there in the hills all the way down to the sea which is about 40, 45 kilometers away. Ooh, looks like we're heading into another bunker. So we're now down in one of the bunkers used by the Axis forces. So this is a two-man bunker. You've got one guy sticking a periscope up there looking to see what's going on and then the other guy there would have been radio posted in here. He'd be passing the information back to the generals behind them to tell them what was going on. Ooh. 
there it is from the outside. So let's head into one of the actual artillery bunkers. So I guess the, I guess the cannon would have been mounted there and facing out this way, scanning out over the horizon over there and also shielding the next bunker along. Um, and then if we look out here, we've got another hole we can see out. But we can see another bunker just down there. And then out you can see the hills over in the distance. This is quite low. This is quite low, having to duck down in here. Again, doesn't seem like a great place uh, to be posted during the war. But yeah. Here we've got a 40mm British anti-aircraft weapon. Let's see what it says on the side. Yes. There we go. 1943, yeah. British Guardian, 40mm. 40mm. Nice. This is German, we've got 102mm. Look at the size of that. You see the plate on the side, maybe some information. Oh, ah, there we go. Got the serial number and the date. 1942. The number for this model. Okay. Uh, Rommel was uh, a good 10k that way, so this isn't where Rommel was. Um, as I said, you can visit his command bunker, but um, it's going to take some organising. So let's head into this one, see what it looks like, see if the general was living in any more luxury than his troops. Ooh. Interesting. I guess he's sticking a periscope up here, which is now being filled in. And yeah, out the other side. Okay. Huh. We got like one window area there, and another there. Walk up, and that's the view that the general would have had, looking at the advancing allied forces. This is a memorial that is still under construction. We can see there's no plaque on there. This is gonna be a tomb to the unknown soldier. I think this is being put together by uh, an organization in New Zealand to the New Zealanders that died during the Battle of Marath. Here we have a map of the overall area. So you can see as we're in the bunkers, we're looking over away from the sea towards Tojen. And you can see the Mareth line running all the way along here up to the coast. Um, and yeah, rather worryingly, I assume they've cleared them all now. This is all anti-tank minefields laid by the Axis forces in order to prevent the Allied advance. So I've tried to find Rommel's command post just by looking at the satellite photography and I'm pretty sure I found it, uh, unfortunately. I've driven all the way out here through, well, on a track from Laziza, I think, is that is that village? And then I think if I was able to cut around, you see that structure up there on that hill. So on the other side of that, I think that's where it is. The only trouble is, the only trouble is I've got this massive motorway in my way and I'm not entirely clear how I can drive underneath or over that so I'm now gonna have to do a huge 15k loop around and come back to over there I hope you guys appreciate this we found it goodness me that was difficult <laughs> good hour of just messing around driving down these tracks without being able to find exactly where we're supposed to be but anyway that I do believe is Rommel's bunker and as you can see the road doesn't really exist but I think we're gonna have to stop and get out and walk the last section because this is a disaster I assume I'm in the right place because it looks like they've actually done some work here uh, not on the road but on the access so we've got some steps leading up to the bunker there oh. seem to be upsetting the local bird life who are quite used to having this to themselves now I know that there are some trenches up 
on the high ground, or at least I think I could see them from the satellite photography. But what we're really interested in is the actual Command HQ we've got here. I really hope there aren't random wild animals in here. Let's have a look. Hello? Okay, it doesn't smell great in here. Okay. And where does this lead? Fortified sleeping quarters, perhaps? Yeah, let's get the light on there. See if we can see anything. We can see wooden holes for wooden posts, might have been holding bunk beds or something. Um, oh well. Head round. Ooh, lots of insects. Oh, disturbing local lizards. Okay. Another big room. Yeah, this is probably sleeping quarters in here. Yep. Yep, into the light. Let's see what we've got in here. Presumably this is the actual command command post. So we've got the metal there. There's our view of the surrounding countryside and you can see the motorway there that caused me so much inconvenience getting here. Right. Another hole, what we've got around here. I don't know what that is. Okay. What an incredible piece of history. So this is where the Desert Fox hung out, trying to stop the Allied advance into Tunisia, unsuccessfully. Amazing sight.